Das, who is a member of the Scientific Advisory Committee of CCRH. Dr. Ishwar Das has had a long tenure with the Ministry of Ayush and has even been director of the National Institute of Homeopathy, Kolkata. We also have on chair Dr. Kaval Sethi, Deputy Advisor, Homeopathy, Ministry of Ayush. May I request the chairs to please start the session. Shall we start? <coughs> Good afternoon, all distinguished delegates, friends. We are going to have the last scientific session in these two days' uh, deliberations. We are going to have a session on enhancing synergies with traditional and conventional medical systems. The most important session out of all these deliberations which we had, how the traditional systems can be synergized with the conventional system. Now, one fundamental question which has been there in my mind for some time is uh, whether homeopathy is clubbed with traditional system or uh, conventional system. Homeopathy is a system which is practiced in over 85 countries, very popular, well accepted. The traditional systems are those which are localized in certain traditions and countries. This is a system which is spread across the globe in all continents. But the convenience sake, WHO has categorized this into the traditional system. Now we have the distinguished speakers. Dr. Madhu Gupta, she is uh, the, the technical officer, the highest technical officer in the WHO regional office in uh, India, who is looking after several countries in the Asian region, South Asian region, regions. And uh, she will be speaking something about the relation between WHO traditional medicine strategy and regulation of homeopathic medicine. Mostly, madam, you might be the most appropriate person to give uh, yeah, uh, your views on regulation of uh, this homeopathic medicine. Uh -huh, country office. Yeah, she is working with the country office in WHO. And we have also another speaker, distinguished speaker, Dr. Kim San Gon Chol. Uh, he is MD, MPH for Health System Development. She is the, he is the regional advisor for traditional medicine in WHO Southeast Asia. He will be speaking on the relation between WHO traditional medicine strategy and regulation of homeopathic medicinal products. Personally, I was speaking with uh, both of these speakers. Regulation of homeopathic medicine has been a very important, uh, important factor in popularizing this system. The last few sessions, we have all been talking about uh, bringing standards of quality assurances in the classical homeopathic products. When it comes to regulation of homeopathic medicine, unfortunately, we have put everything uh, everything being marketed in homeopathy in one bracket under homeopathic medicine. There are very good medicines which are which whose uh, the scientific evidences are well established, the clinical efficacy is established, whose therapeutic benefits are established, the safety measures are uh, evaluated. They are all the classical medicines which are being practiced. And there are also certain formulations. Formulations are the medicines which are marketed, which do not have a pharmacological effect, but therapeutic effect. So many medicines mixed together and formed one product for a particular clinical condition. This is all there in the market. Another are the combinations, where the pharmacologically active substances are mixed along with potentized medicine marketed. So we have classical medicine, we have combination medicine, we have formulations, then certain proprietary medicines prepared by certain pharmacies, biochemics, 
All these have been put together in one market, one bracket, and labeled as homeopathic medicine. There are certain uh, evidences about uh, the scientificity of some of these products, which are being raised by some countries at some times. That is bringing one of the bad name and reputation to the best and simplest homeopathic medical system as a whole. If we can classify this in separately, put bring separate regulatory measures in each of these categories, one for classical medicine, one for combination, one for formulation, externals, things will be much easier for uh, facing these sort of criticism. I think this will be one uh, strategy we could do it. And the speakers will definitely, I, I hope that uh, they will be bringing out their opinions and views and experiences and uh, enlighten all the delighted uh, audience. Thank you very much, madam. Now you can start. I call upon Dr. Madhu Gupta. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry? Oh, first speaker. Traditional and integrated medical systems can commonalities generate mutual synergies by Thomas uh, and another by relation between national policies on integrative and complementary practices and regulation of homeopathic and other traditional and integrated medical medicine products experience in Brazil by Paulo Rocha and Daniel Amadou. So, Dr. Thomas Brick, I'm sorry. Breitkreuz is difficult to pronounce. How uh, is that? Uh, uh, horrible German, Breitkreuz, okay. which means a large cross, but yeah. however. <laughs> anyway, all the uh, best. Oh, just maybe, just as a one uh, additional word of introduction, is that uh, the purpose of this session is that we, we started very narrowly focusing on homeopathy, and the purpose is that we're gradually going to widen the circle to say, well, what can we learn from other disciplines? And uh, I'm, I'm very pleased that uh, Dr. Breitkreuz was able to come here. He is um, uh, involved in anthroposophical medicine, and he is involved in the regulation of anthroposophical medicines, which is a whole system of medicine. It's similar to, but also different from homeopathy. And so we really want to start exploring now what can we learn in homeopathy from what's going on in other disciplines and to look for those synergies. So I really look forward to uh, what Dr. Breitkreuz can share with us on that. Yes, thank you very much. So what I actually want to do is not to speak very much about anthroposophic medicine to you, but to speak about integrative medicine, because I understood the question of commonalities that we try to anticipate what is coming in the future. How will healthcare system change? How do we integrate more and more different medical systems to provide their therapies to the patients? And if we do that, then the question is, is there some sort of integrative regulation which would fit to the concept of integrative medicine? So I will speak to you a bit more about a vision, how it could be, and some strategical reflections, what would be wise to do. <clears throat> so my background, I'm a, I'm a medical doctor, uh, internal medicine, oncology, palliative care, and I am the medical director of the Filda Clinic, an anthroposophic hospital, uh, which is the acute care hospital for Stuttgart Airport. That's why you see the airport uh, picture there. And there we really combine uh, modern Western medicine with anthroposophic medicine and homeopathy. And that means that uh, we're doing intensive care, we do operations, we do pediatric oncology, oncology, uh, and in all these fields, the doctors and the nurses who treat the patients have a double qualification. They are all doctors trained in Western medicine, 
and have an additional qualification in anthroposophic medicine. And the nurse is the same, conventional nursing and anthroposophical nursing. And this is very interesting because it's like a microcosmos where you can show if really an integrated medicine comes from one hand when you can decide in front of the patient what to use. Is it feasible to use a homeopathic drug for an upper airway infection? Or is it a sepsis and you need the antibiotic? Yeah? Then you are the decision maker and you are in your own person double qualified. Uh, of course, uh, Commission C, uh, where I am the chairperson since, I think, 11 years now. This is very near to Professor Knoes, and uh, I'm happy that we're here together. And finally, this is something to make you familiar with my background. Hufe Landgesellschaft is an umbrella organization in Germany, combining all the medical doctors' associations in the field of complementary medicine. So this is one important part of integrative medicine, that we do not only <clears throat> integration of conventional Western medicine plus one complementary method, like homeopathy or Ayurveda or TCM or whatsoever, but what we experience is that we integrate different complementary medical systems as well, always asking who can contribute something meaningful to, uh, to a healthcare problem. And in Germany, uh, about one third of all the medical doctors who are conventionally trained medical doctors first, and then do a two or three years additional qualification in a complementary system, one third of our doctors who work outside hospitals have a qualified training in at least one complementary system. And that's why it's our reality now to look how to combine what to use and how to bring aspects and methods and tools together. And that's my background to ask the same question for regulation. So you can see, for example, here on the slide, there is uh, the homeopathic uh, society, doctor society in Germany. Uh, there are the TCM people. And in Germany, imagine, uh, uh, there are two doctor society for Ayurveda medicine as well. And, and it all belongs together. And it's my honor to be the political speaker for the whole. So again, doing that, I am always in the situation to integrate and to, to speak to politicians and say, what can we contribute as a whole integrative community to health concerns like antimicrobial resistance or life quality and advanced cancer stages and so on. So this is just a little slide about the new emerging paradigm of integrative medicine. Um, you see conventional approach and the different complementary approaches, they always differ. And in the last century, it was thought uh, these are, this is not compatible. The question was who is right and who is wrong. And nowadays, the question is how to combine best. Yeah, so I love this uh, uh, definition of integrative medicine to say it is best of both in the best possible integration and combination as the patient needs it. And uh, I mentioned here the uh, WHO strategy uh, for traditional and complementary medicines because this strategy is about integration into the healthcare systems as well. So I feel the emerging paradigm for the next 30, 40 years to come is the paradigm of integration and, and not simply of differentiation. So features of integrative medicines are that, uh, that it's all about uh, dialogue and integration. We collect best practices from different fields uh, for very important challenges in healthcare. care. And this is very important to me. If you are familiar, I'm very often in the U.S. speaking with the integrative medicine movement in the U.S., which is not very much based on medicines, more on yoga and MBSR and acupuncture, so more non-medicinal products based, if you want, which has to do with the FDA policy, I suppose, uh, however, a bit. Um, look, there is a generous spirit in this worldwide movement nowadays that people really uh, have a common spirit, a dedication to collaboration and to mut mutual learnings. There is no superiority and no inferiority. It's a question of mutual learnings. Um, so the traditions in complementary medicine seem to be different, but we share questions, we share approaches, and 
we share scientific methods which are needed to describe and evaluate best how different uh, complementary systems work. So this is really an, an inspiring uh, process and it is really a cross-cultural learning process. So this is the main question. So what if global traditional and complementary medic medicinal products regulation would up the spirit, the developments, and the learnings from the field of integrative medicine? And if the global elaboration of integrative medicine would go hand in hand with a global elaboration of something which I like to call now as a preliminary title, integrative regulation with mutual learnings as well. And if this mutual, uh, if this integrative regulation would share questions and scientific approaches and methodologies and global collaboration with integrative medicine. So the last talks in the last sessions were very inspiring for me because you could see in homeopathy and with Harald Hamre's lecture that something is going on. This is really innovation. We are dealing with innovation there. Uh, so, possible areas of, of uh, integration are common standards uh, for different systems. Um, I will point that out later for which fields uh, in the three pillars of safety and efficacy and quality, I believe that commonalities are there. And it could be common standards or it could be common core core standards, so that means that every country will have its own traditions and rules, but a core of things are global, could be global. Then uh, integration could mean that we share common methodological approaches. Um, and for the regulatory practice, of course, uh, there may be quite a lot of, uh, of, of mutual learning. Um, <clears throat> so this is a representation of the three big pillars of regulation, you, you know it. If you look at safety, so I would say in safety issues, this is a predominant uh, concern for common product regulation. Um, <clears throat> look, if we deal, for example, with belladonna or artemisia or any other plant, if this plant is used in homeopathy, or TCM, or Ayurveda, or naturopathy, this is somehow secondary. The toxicology and the safety issues can be shared by everybody. Uh, so here, a system-specific approach is not central. The, the approach is a substance-related approach. <clears throat> And of course, this common approach would implicate that we do again more for good pharmacovigilance systems. We could use integrative care settings to implement there a good pharmacovigilance because pharmacovigilance is very, very different in the different parts of the world. So this very, very simplified a graphical representation shows in a very rough way um, that the common approach focusing on the substance and not on the therapy system uh, could lead to something where we really share things. It was if everybody in the world, uh, you know, we, maybe we deal with 4,000 or 5,000 substances in the different medical systems. This is quite a lot, but it is limited. And if we would combine efforts to do good toxicological and ADR research on that, which would be of value for all the different methods um, across the borders of specific complementary therapy system that would reduce efforts on the national level. It would avoid lots of parallel efforts worldwide in different countries, and it would reduce uncertainties and expenditures for the industry. So if we would really try to think global and to act local, but to combine this locally acting, uh, it would be a very, very strong uh, way of integration concerning safety issues. So, and of course, uh, because I'm realistic, I think traditions are different and national policies are different. So I, I talked about core standards. So core procedures could be the same, even there are always differences in regulation. 
If you look to efficacy or effectiveness, then it is clear this is predominantly something where you need a system-specific approach, as we heard before from Robert von Hasselin, for example. It has to fit with the thinking and the way of acting in homeopathy, an indication for belladonna. There is no way to see one drug, one indication, and one RCT. This is normal in conventional medicine. It does not fit. We, we look at constitutional things. We look at individual symptomatology. The way of action is different with these drugs than in conventional medicine. So this is system specific. And um, uh, that's why here integration would mean that we integrate on the level of methodolog methodological approaches of evaluation. We need tools, we need international accepted methodological tools to make proof of individualized therapy systems. And there again, if we put our forces together and elaborate a system of methods tools of methods which are accepted and published in international journals. It will give us much support uh, to, go, to do a good evaluation uh, for the different systems accordingly. And again, it has to do with cross-cultural mutual learnings and uh, in terms of best regulatory practices as well. Because you know, when a new country who was not yet familiar with homeopathy, for example, I know it from some European countries in the north of Europe or in the south of Europe, if you are not familiar with regulation of such, such a medical system, everything seems to be dangerous. Yeah? So we need learnings not only with best evidence and not only with best medical practice, but with best regul regulatory practice as well. So for effectiveness or efficacy, this could be the graph, and, and, and I say effectiveness because very often when we deal with individualized medicines, we can make a proof that these medicines, that the concept, that the whole system works for, for, for different indications. We don't have to test the single drug. It's not possible to test all single drugs, as it was pointed out before. But if we would have strong effectiveness, comparative effectiveness studies showing that it is a good thing to do so, it would be a big, big support for the different complementary medical systems. So quality. Um, there are commonalities for methods for specification, but on the other hand, um, the, the manufacturing process is different. And I abbreviate it because we are short in time. So for quality, it may be that there is one part where you can do this is a question of commonality between the different therapy systems. And other parts, like in homeopathy or other, they are really system specific. And again there, for the system specific approaches, nevertheless, we need met methods and tools uh, which fit for everybody. It would be so convincing for regulators worldwide if the different therapy systems would uh, collaborate together. And to conclude, finally, look what will happen um, if, we, if we do it right or not right. Look here. For example, if we have a regulation, this is sometimes the case in Europe, where only efficacy data for single drugs are accepted. Yeah? Then you can there is no RCT you can show for a single homeopathic drug. You ha don't have those studies. And then you have no evidence. It seems that if only this would be accepted, there is zero. On the other hand side, uh, looking at safety, sometimes we do not have enough ADR data. Then we have concepts of hypothetical calculated risks like the first safe dilution concept, um, which is not empirical, which is instead of a lacking empirical basis. It's, it's a, a method to be used because empirical data are lacking. Um, so what will happen if you combine that? If on the left-hand side, you would say for the single drug approach, no positive data, it is zero. And on the other hand side, of course, there are some safety concerns. So it always is unfavorable. The benefit-risk relation always tends to be unfavorable. Even if these drugs are on the market since decades, and even if there are very, very positive experiences. So we need these methods. And this is the final thing. So if we would look for effectiveness with system approach techniques, 
uh, if we would look on the other hand side, safety for sound toxicologic data, experience, and integrated pharmacovigilance systems, then we would have a much more balanced benefit risk uh, relation. And this is very important because, in the end, every regulator has to decide on benefit and risk. And there we have to see what is needed for them to do good. Uh, decisions. So finally, uh, this was a very short overview. I know it's just some new ideas. I hope we are able to discuss it. Um, uh, but uh, I want to close by uh, giving an invitation back to you because uh, I feel so honored that uh, you in India uh, uh, invited us from all over the world. Uh, very generous, very collaborative. Thank you very much again. And um, yeah, thank you. <clears throat> and uh, there are two, two things, two congresses happening this year in Germany. The first is the World Congress of Integrative Medicine and Health, which will happen in Berlin. I invite you, if you would like to come, it gives you a good overview on the field of integrative medicine worldwide. And the second is something you may know, because uh, the, the big international homeopathy congress is uh, going to happen in Leipzig, uh, near Hahnemann's birthplace uh, this year, that will be in June. And, and if you would like to come and if you would like to meet uh, with doctors from the Hufeland Gesellschaft or if you would like to visit uh, integrative hospitals as we were able to build them up, it's not the end, it's just the beginning, but to share, you are very, very much invited. And so thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Thomas, for such a crisp, concise and enlightening presentation. You are from the land of Honeyman and you have touched all the topics perfectly, safety, quality and efficacy. Quality, of course, takes care of both the ends, the safety and the efficacy. By virtue of touching all the points and especially the integration part. The integration is the key. I think on this point we will like to uh, end this Congress by the end of the day. We want to integrate not only the systems, but the countries as well. The integration should be about the systems and worldwide. We should have similar regulations, not similar rather, same regulations all over the world, which will pave a path for future uh, issues regarding export, import, commercialization, and patient benefit. Thank you once again for such a nice presentation. No, now the next speaker is Dr. Paulo Roberto. He is from the Ministry of Health of Brazil in coordination of the National Policy of Integrity and Complementary Medicine in Health, research consultant in Oswaldo Institution. And uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Paulo is a public health consultant for the Ministry of Health. Dr. Paulo, please. Good afternoon. Uh, before we start the presentation, I'd like to thank the organizing team for the excellent work done to make this forum a really important place for valuable discussions. And thank you, Dr. Manchanda and Dr. Van Hasseling, for giving us this opportunity to share a, a little bit of the Brazilian experience. I'm going to introduce to you the, this very important uh, public health policy in Brazil which deals with the integrative and complementary medicine practices into the national health system. According to the Brazilian constitution, health is a state duty and a right for all. And we do have in Brazil 60% uh, coverage in the health public service and 25% of the population uh, have access to only to private health insurance coverage. And as we believe that in, into the health, national health care, the primary health care level is, uh, is the main door of the entrance from the population to have access into health care. We, we do that uh, in a model based in the family health strategy, which is a basic team, physician, nurse, community health agents. And we do have another uh, differentiation which is extended team with dentists, psychologists, nutritionists, physiotherapists, and other health professionals. 
the national policy of integrative medicine contemplates complex medicine systems and therapeutic resources, which are also called by the WHO uh, traditional and complementary medicine. This national policy we have in Brazil contributes to the strengthening of the fundamental principles of the Brazilian national health system, which we call SUS. It acts in the fields of mechanism of natural injury prevention, as well as promotion, maintenance, and recovery of health based on the model of humanized attention and focus on the integrality of the individual. The PNP, as we call in Brazil, represents to the Brazilian national health system also the real possibility of improvement to the population to access TNCM health services, which was a 